Hi everybody, this is Agnesa from No Sediment and today we're going to taste New World Chardonnay wines. Not only are we going to taste these wines, but we will do it in blind. So this will get interesting, especially because I have added few more challenges. But before we taste, I wanted to say a few words on why I do this and why it is not an easy task. If you want to jump directly to the tasting, just skip this part. So why Chardonnay and why from a new world? I remember the good old times when almost every blind tasting started with a question, is this a new world wine or old world wine? And it was quite easy to pick a side. But nowadays the line between both worlds is becoming more and more blurry. So it's more difficult to establish wine's origin if tasting blind. Secondly, when we are talking about terroir, we, the wine geeks, are often focusing on famous European vineyards. And even though terroir is a highly discussed topic in the New World winemaking countries as well, their wines are often left out when talking about specific terroir. And thirdly, there are grapes that are known to express their terroir with ease and grapes that don't. If the concept of terroir is most associated with Pinot Noir, then Chardonnay is one of the grapes that in the glass greatly expresses winemaking techniques used, which at the end can hide these subtle characteristics of terroir. So today I'm going to taste six great Chardonnay wines five from New World and for an extra bonus challenge because why not make this even more challenging one from Israel. As you see I am not giving an easy task for myself but I want to see whether or not there is a unique mark on the wine style so that I can place these wines in a specific region or terroir if you will. And after all blind tasting is the best way to really assess the quality, style and differences between the wines without being jeopardized by the well or lesser known labels and price tags. So let's do the blind tasting. These wines were kindly sponsored and provided by the 8 Wines web shop, more on them later. Just to be transparent here, I have seen the labels of the wines that we are going to taste today, but I have never tasted majority of them and they have been poured in my glasses by my assistant, so I don't know which one is which. So let's try wine number one. Well, I would definitely say that that is a Chardonnay. It has like these ripe, fresh, stone fruits, peaches, nectarines, preserved lemons. Actually quite beautiful nose, I love it. It has juicy and refreshing acidity that lifts up the ripe fruit flavors on the palate as well, yet it is a bit creamy. So I would guess that this wine has undergone partial or full malolactic fermentation. You can actually also feel those, those aromas on the nose. Wine number two. Well, this also shows some ripe stone fruits and maybe some melon and peaches. It does have more expressive citrusy element on the nose. It's so interesting. It is quite floral as well, like um, I would say acacia. Beautiful on the palate. I really love it. It maybe has a bit more kick from the acidity side, so it feels fresher. So maybe an origin with some cooling effects. It almost has that ripe sweetness. It's not sugar sweetness, but like ripe fruit sweetness on the aftertaste, which I usually associate with Californian wines. So that would be my first guess. Beautiful wine though. Wine number three. Oh, this is interesting. From the first three wines that I have tasted today, this one is the shyest on the nose. But what I love it, it has some salinity. Quite floral, citrusy, white blossom. And this one shows elevated acidity. And because of that acidity, it kind of lingers on the palate way longer. So this is also quite interesting and a unique wine. Wine number four. I would say it's mostly dominated by white fruits, such as uh, white apples, pears, um, white peaches again. But all these primary aromas are kind of mixed within some buttery and uh, creme fraiche characteristics. This wine was very interesting on the palate. It was this round and rich and full-bodied wine and actually I think had elevated alcohol level, maybe around 14, maybe 14.5 and it had an element of oakiness as well on the palate. Up until these wines that I have tasted, one, two, three, four, I would say that four might be the odd one out. So maybe Israel, we'll see. 
Wow, I love it. It has pure fresh fruits, very precise, very clean, um, very, very elegant, um, lovely nose. On the palate, this wine is big and, uh, and round and rich, but it has kind of, I don't want to call it like ballerina style. It has a power, like it can do all the pirouettes, but it is very, very tiny, kind of very slim. The acidity is beautifully intervened within the body and refreshes the palate and lifts up the fruit. And acidity is, is medium plus or, or, or definitely elevated, the juicy, lively, mouth-watering even. I like this wine very much. Wine number six. Mm. The Lees. The creamy texture, the yeasty characters are coming kind of in front. On the palate, it has concentration and weight, and maybe like even the shoulders and body, but then it all kind of lingers away, leaving this very tight and very precise uh, preserved lemon and fresh citrus fruit and maybe orange blossom kind of characters, which is lovely. Like you have this like big deal and, and then it's, uh, and it's kind of fading away and leaving this very lovely, uh, elegant character. So I have tasted all the wines and now it's time to try to pinpoint them in a specific origin. I will leave wine number one out for a few seconds and I will start with wine number two because this was something that I felt comfortable with because of that sweet, ripe, stone fruit aftertaste that this wine showed, I would go for California. This one had a bit higher acidity than the first one, so I would guess that cooler region of California, maybe Carneros? That's one done. So the next one is wine number three, and this was very unique. As I said, it maybe had shyer nose, even though it's opening up right now, I love it. But it still has that salinity like seaweed character. I will say that this one is Argentinian one and only because I know the specific winemaker. Plus, I said that this wine had elevated acidity for sure, medium plus, and that you can find when you have vineyards planted on higher elevations and you have bigger day and night temperature swings. It kind of retains the acidity in the grapes. So that would be Mendoza, Argentina. Wine number four. I think I said that wine number four was uh, Israel. Israel is a hot climate. And so this one is big, bold, and kind of round and rich and buttery style of Chardonnay. And this one also showed the highest uh, alcohol level. Wine number five. I will say that this one is New Zealand because that kind of purity of fruit, that kind of cleanness and precision, in my opinion, you can only find in Australia or New Zealand. I would put this wine in New Zealand. And the last one is similar in a style. It also shows clean, pure, and very precise fruit flavors, but it has more kind of oakiness to it. Uh, it has more maybe winemaking stamp, if you will, uh, to the wine. So I would go for Australia. I haven't talked about wine number one. I know that that leaves only one winemaker and wine style left out. So all I have to say that this is Napa uh, Chardonnay. I just know what I have left out. It is very kind of elegant, almost lean style. Uh, Chardonnay from Napa. So should we reveal now? Let's do it. So wine number one. So I would go and choose this wine for a hot summer day, drinking and enjoying it by the pool or together with my friends at the beach because it is very refreshing, easy drinking, lovely wine. And I already see it, what it is. It is indeed Napa, Chateau Montalena. It is actually one of those wineries that won in the Paris Judgment in 1976. And at that time it was made by Miljenko Grigic from Croatia. He is still alive and he has his own winery. Beautiful wine, 2018 vintage, still very fresh. So let's reveal wine number two. I would love to enjoy this wine at the Christmas dinner with the family because you just know that everyone would love it. Oh, so this is in fact Rombauer Vineyards 2020 Chardonnay from Carneros. This was beautiful wine, amazing wine, yeah. So wine number three. 
This wine I would bring to a geeky wine loving friends party because I think that would introduce a lot of conversations. And I said that this one is coming from Mendoza, Argentina. And it is indeed El Enemigo from Mendoza Chardonnay. The reason why I said that this is a unique wine is because if I'm not mistaken, they actually are aging wine under the floor, under the yeasty film, if you will, uh, similarly as I do in Jura wine region. It was kind of a giveaway for me, but this is lovely. This is amazing. So next wine is wine number four. And this would be a wine for a meditation. So let's see where it's from. Okay. <laughs> Happy! This one really is from Israel. So yes, this winery is actually quite famous with this specific Chardonnay wine. So yes, a lovely wine for a meditation. From all six wines, wine number five I like the most. I would drink it or enjoy it with my significant other on a romantic dinner. So let's reveal it. And indeed, it is a Chardonnay from Auckland, from New Zealand. Actually, Kumeo River is uh, quite famous with their Chardonnay wines. They have gained like a cult status. This uh, is definitely going to be my highlight tonight. So finally, wine number six. And until now, I have been correct with all the wines. I kind of feel bad about it, to be honest, because I wanted like a little mistake. Otherwise, you will think that this is staged which is not, but let's reveal the last wine. I would really like to share this bottle of wine with my close friends. It showed amazing fruit intensity and concentration. It was very elegant. And I said it was Australian. And it is Australia. Bassa Felix Heitesbury Chardonnay from Margaret River. Amazing, beautiful, beautiful wine. Wow, what a tasting that was. These wines are unique and definitely not easy to get, at least in Europe. Once again, I want to say thank you to 8 Wines Web Shop for providing these absolutely amazing and beautiful wines. Be sure to check out their web shop. I will link it here and here. I like 8 Wines because they have an amazing wine selection and you can shop by expert ratings. They deliver to all Europe, including United Kingdom, and thus ensuring availability of these and many other iconic New World and European wines. And as you saw in the intro, their delivery is quick and efficient. So this tasting was all about Chardonnay and you might want to explore more about it, so make sure to watch my other video on Chardonnay grape variety.